Welcome, fans of flip clocks. Well, on eBay, I was buying a Juliet flip clock that was for $5.99. I buy it now. And even with shipping, it was only $13.61. And I thought, well, I've never done a Juliet before. So what we've got is a model FDC 1086 that's not working. The uh, clock's not working. The radio's not working. So when I got it, I found a clock that is in really good shape. It's really nice looking. So I went to Walmart and got me some fuzzy sticks because they don't sell pipe cleaners anymore. And then I got some clear ammonia. You're going to also need some distilled water, not spring water. It's got to be distilled. I went to O'Reilly's and got me some connector and spark plug boot grease. It's a dielectric grease, and really what you want is 100% silicone grease. And then I got this for a solvent. It's a silicone lubricant. It's just to break up some stuff. It's supposed to dry and leave uh, some silicone behind, but then also got some isopropyl alcohol. So we got the clock, and we're going to work on disassembly. But again, you can see it's in really good shape. Uh, so we'll just most of the, most of these clocks. If you pull straight up, uh, straight away on these knobs, you can get them out. Now that's the that's for the clock set. And sometimes I can grab the alarm button and pull them both off at the same time, and that worked in this case. And the tuner knob just comes straight off without much problem. Now I did work on a sound design like this before, similar to this, and um, and this is where the volume button is probably not working. That's why the now these buttons, these knobs, or these things aren't going to come off very easy. But anyway, that that volume slider there is probably why the radio doesn't work. And and this, you just need some some force. Um, I'd be careful if you tried to pry these off. Uh, that that is a um, sort of a chrome paint on there. The top actually has what's a brushed aluminum strip across the top of this chrome paint. You don't want to scar that up. Eventually we get the last one off. And then we turn our attention to the underside where you have just a, a boatload of screws here. But there's only, um, I think, five. One, two. And here you have to take down this one here. Now that one I'm going to show you later. And these two in the front. That one later, that's a machine screw. And, and you'll see why. Most of these are just plastic screws. That's a flathead uh, plastic screw. And the others are the self-drilling uh, um, plastic screws. This is the machine screw. So you'll want to put the machine screw back there when you reassemble. And the two on this uh, back side here. The rest are hold components in, and we will take them out eventually because uh, we're going to clean the whole clock. And when you clean your clock, you want to get all the stuff off and use soap and water. So we got to be careful when we raise up here. There's probably a speaker under there. What's this? That's a U of UL sticker that I'll, I'll try to find out where that went and maybe put it back on. Yeah, so uh, the leads on that speaker. There's the... Uh, there's the bar where that machine screw went, but the leads on that speaker are, are too short and, and it's going to be best to get that off so that we don't uh, rip that wires off. I like to show this because it shows, you know, when you reassemble the clock, you can see where the brackets were initially and where, the, where everything was kind of oriented. Now, you want to try to keep that speaker safe. It's going to be flopping around throughout restoration and you want, don't want to puncture that cone. Uh, this will clean up really good with soap and water and it's really not that bad someone took care of this clock there goes that speaker the front it's a little cloudy so we do want to get it all apart later and clean that up so let's take a look at what we got here this here that's the tuner wheel and it's stringed and man you do not want to take that apart unless you just have to and in this case you won't have to and so we see our motors on the back side of the clock, which is a little different from some of the Panasonic's I've worked on. And that's almost for sure the problem with why our, our clock won't work. It almost always is. So we want to go ahead and start by getting the, uh, the tuner situation out. So we've got uh, four screws that need to come out. Once they're out... You, it's a simple matter of, I just lift up from the back and pull away. It comes right out, and nothing fancy to, to do to get that out. You see a cl um, hard plastic uh, face there, and here's our, our uh, 
volume switch that we're going to work on. And that's when you when you work that that staticky when the radio's uh, when the radio's trying to play. So uh, you just uh, we're going to undo the two screws here on either side of that switch to get better access. And now before I go any further, this light hit on the left there that had fallen off, and I'm going to have to re-glue that back on. But they did, I guess they didn't have hot glue back in the day. They had some kind of brown glue that's just come loose. But look at this here. That's not a screw in bulb. That's one piece. So. Um, probably made it easy for assembly, but man, if you have to replace that, you're going to have to work out something to uh, to replace that bulb. And thankfully, ours is working. And we'll, like I said, we'll get that in and secure that with a little with a little hot glue. So what we got here, I've used contact cleaner on one of these before, and it never did work correctly. Even though, though that works on other uh, volume controls, um, but here the speaker lo looks great, but it's not giving us any sound, just a lot of static. So we're going to go ahead and show you what technique I used that has uh, actually turned out to work really good. So we're going to get um, something to clean that out with, and I just thought I'd try this uh, WD-40 silicone stuff. And uh, it's supposed to dry once it's done, so it's got petroleum distillates, and we're just going to work it back and forth to try to get any corrosion or gunk out of there. And we're going to use our pipe cleaners, or what they call fuzzy sticks, to get down in there. And that actually worked out really good with these uh, fuzzy sticks to get down in there and clean that up. Then we'll go ahead and get our silicone grease, which from uh, the internet, I found that that's what they used to use in the old days. A lot of silicone grease on these switches and... Just put a little bit of gob on this uh, small screwdriver and worked it around. And it, it acts as, as, uh, as a lubricant there to make that slide work really good too. So as far as sl sliding back and forth. Now with our motor, we just have to undo these uh, screws. Um, we'll remove the, the housing here, the shroud, so that we can get access to the motor. And it all looks to be in good shape except um, you can just see it's not turning very well. You'll see the difference when we get that cleaned up here. Now, I wanted to try something different because there's a lot of speculation as to why these get dirty. And I was thinking, well, what if it's the axle? What if it's just the axle? So I took some alcohol, and I'm dripping it down on the inside of those holes and getting down to the axle. This is how you would lubricate it if you ever did lubricate the clock. You don't want to spray WD-40 in there. I've been through this on the other videos, but... Don't do that. You want to clean it out, and I'm and so I tried this for a while. I don't show the whole length of it, and it that never did work. It didn't uh, it didn't get the clock working again. So we're going to have to go to our old standby. And and what I do is uh, you've seen this if you've watched any of my other videos. We're just going to fill it up with 91% alcohol, the strongest alcohol you can get. Um, regular 70% will work, but this just dries quicker. And you get it in there, and you spin and spin. So I believe that grease, oil, smoke, dust has got in that rope between the rotor and the uh, the stator there. There's not much room. It's uh, you know very high tolerances, and I think it's just enough to cause a little bit of friction. And you work that for a while, just as long as it takes. See if you see a difference. And that's just just goes and goes. Now that's not plugged in, so that's going to work great. Now, um, that way you could, I could have cleaned the motor that way and just left it all like that and put it back together, but we're going to disassemble all this stuff. You can see here on where the uh, transformer is that there's nuts on the other side, so if you had tried to take those off, you wouldn't have got very far anyway. And I've seen that on some of the older clocks. If you're ever undoing a screw, it won't come out. Now, this 5.5 millimeter socket has come in handy more than once on, on a lot of different models of clocks, so the, it's not the 5, it's too small, and the 6 is too big, so 5.5 does a good job here so I'm holding that screw on the back side with my finger and that actually is working for this one but you'll have to get a screwdriver we've got three nuts there um, two on the transformer and one on the thing that's holding down the securing the uh, electric cord there that we'll have to get out they do have this brown sticky glue stuff I think it was to stop screws from coming undone but uh, a lot of that's wore out so here on the uh, cord hold down it's a longer screw. 
so that so if you're when on reassembly if you're wondering well what's this long screw here for it's a machine screw because you know that's what kind you have to have to go back in the nut it's a it's the longer one so now we're going to have to turn our attention to the um, the clock mechanism itself to get that out so um, you're going to go on the underside now these are recessed screws and so I'm uh, using my little cobalt here this is some kind of I like this thing it's really handy uh, I'm not getting money for showing these tools I just like tools that work good and so that reaches right down in there and I'm able to get those screws out so what we got say a front cover here that's not in really bad shape but uh, it's a little dirty so I'm going to talk to you about how to clean that out and what you want to use is uh, the ammonia down in there that gets rid of that blackish smokish stuff and clears that it right out and you follow that with maybe some soap and water and then finally with um, distilled water and that way you can let it air dry and you won't have to wipe that and you wipe that off and you might end up scratching it so you want to be careful this chrome paint there it's uh, brushed aluminum on the very top but right here this is chrome paint and that ammonia may damage it so you want to be careful with that and again a lot of water and it followed with distilled water so now what I'm going to show you is this is just a little tip for reassembly my little uh, screwdriver there is not magnetic, so you guys probably know this, but if you don't, it's a neat little trick. You just take your screwdriver bit or your screwdriver, and you take a, a magnet. This happens to be a moderately strong magnet. And you just kind of wipe it the same direction like you were sharpening it. Go from the back end to the front. Just wipe it. And you're just going to take a regular bit and turn it into a... Uh, magnetic bit for, for a spell. It, it'll hold that for a while. This gets really tough. The reassembly was crazy because it was like the game operation where you're you're trying to get down in there and hold it steady and, and it's just a hard reassembly. So, yeah, sorry about that. Couldn't help myself. Anyway, this is the end result. Radio's working great. Coming in fine. Flip clock's working. And that is act the actual music straight from that radio. It's playing great. The Juliet model FDC 1086. It's a good looking clock. Now it's a good working clock. We'll have to resell this on eBay. I basically just got it for the fun of it. When you get the time, come visit us at flipclockfans.com.